Healthy pets, healthy owners. I'm Dr. Edwin Sulkowski. We're going to have a kind of a different show today. We had a guest that was unable to, at the last minute, attend the show. And we thought we'd do a fun show where we invited Kaz and, and McKenna to come on the show and just have a conversation about things that, that I'm doing and things that they're doing with their animals and their lives. Welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners, you two. Thank you. And Thank I, you for I having appreciate us. you filling in here and doing mm -hmm. kind of a short little fun show today. Thank yep. you for having us on. Yep. Yeah. We're excited to ask you some questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So first off, your dog is adorable. That's, um, tu that's Tucker. He's kind Tucker. of sleeping. <laughs> is how old is he? You know, tu I rescued Tucker uh, probably about 13 years ago, right around there. So I don't know his true age. Uh, Tucker went paralyzed, um, and so he's been paralyzed for about 11 Ooh. years. But he does pretty well. He finally, he finally loves Mrs. Frick. <laughs> he always <laughs> gave Mrs. Frick a hard time, but now he doesn't do that anymore. But uh, he's a good little dog. Yeah, he's adorable. Yeah. So first off. Where did you go to college and what did you want to do? Because I know you told me before you, um, you're a dentist and you also work with um, patients uh, with th thyroid, thyroid um, and, and then pets too. So what did you initially want to do? Well, actually, I'm a graduate of Washington Jefferson College and oh, cool. I, got, I have a business and economics uh, degree, but I come from a family of dentists and decided then to go into dentistry. Mm -hmm. So I, I attended and graduated from Case Western Reserve School of, of uh, Medical Dentistry in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So um, that led me into the field of dentistry. And then I started going into uh, veterinarian offices to help them clean their dog's teeth. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of raised, my, my parents uh, were big on, on animals in the house. We had birds, fish, dogs, stray cats, whatever. So we were always around animals. Yep. So I've had about 12, 13 dachshunds in my life. Wow. wow. This is, uh, this is Tucker's, uh, the last one of my last group is six. Really? So I had six at one time. Wow. Is that the most you've ever had at one time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were, they've all been on the show. They've all been on Healthy Pets, or Healthy Owners, and we were originally Let's Talk Healthy Pets. And so my dogs have all, all shown up on the shows. Jeez. Wow. So you said he's a Dodson? He's a miniature Dodson. Wow. Yeah. So, and you had all Dodsons? All, yeah, well, I was raised with Dodsons. Wow. So it's kind of the family dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's so that's really a breed cool. I know pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so I just got, I just got a, t well, uh, a new puppy about 12 weeks ago, and she's a little devil. <laughs> Do you have any advice? I mean, um, she bites me all the time. Do you have any advice, you know, to get her to calm down and um, how to, like, train her correctly so, you know, she doesn't bite? Because I don't want to, you know, hit her. I don't feel like that's the... Oh, I don't think you should ever hit a dog. No, no. You know, I, I think, don't think that's right. I think, you know, dogs react according to the tone of your voice and how you react. Mm -hmm. So puppies, I think, might kind of tend to want to chew things and bite. So oh, I, yeah. I don't think that's an ag probably not an aggressive type thing. Mm -hmm. But if you give them safe chew sticks to chew, you know, like bully sticks or so forth. That takes care of that gnawing thing and as their teeth are coming in and yep. and so forth, you know, they're, they need, they have that chewing sensation. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll bite, but I, I, I think bi dogs bite, in my experience, because they, they're afraid. They have a really? fear factor. How about boredom? Do you think they? Well, I don't think they bite out of boredom. I think they may chew out of boredom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? that's what my dog does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to satisfy that. You know, they have a lot of energy, especially puppy. What okay. kind of dog do you have? German Shepherd Husky mix. Oh, they're beautiful dogs. Oh, she's yeah. so pretty. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be a pretty big dog. Yeah. So if what's her name? Uh, Lady. Lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice. if we put shoe sticks around the house, um, and she still continues to bite, then what do we do? Because that's what we're at right now. Well. Is she biting in a playful manner? It kind of hurts. <laughs> well, <gonna> lie. <laughs> but it, it, she's acting like she wants to play. Yes, yes. Yeah, wants yeah to play. you know, I, I think just playing with them and having what I like, and I used to do this with my dogs, I'd get a, a rope, you know, a dog rope, yeah. not one that's dyed with different colors and chemicals <laughs> and so forth, just a raw, yeah. natural hemp rope, mm -hmm. and have them tug on that, and I think that'll help. Okay. You know, that's been my experience. Interesting. Well, and then what do you do with, um, how long have you been working in dentistry? Oh, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Wow. <laughs> so 25 years, no, 
Yeah, it's twenty about thirty years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Earlier you said you, you do talks all over the nation. Yeah. What exactly do you talk about? Well, on a variety of things. I, I've been lecturing for years at uh, Super Zoo in Las Vegas. Uh, that's the largest pet in, uh, expo in the country. It's only open to people in the business. Um, should be doing that again this August. I, uh, I haven't confirmed it yet. Um, I've lectured at pet uh, expos in all over, California, Pennsylvania, Georgia. Um, I lecture on thyroid for human humans. Um, I lecture on how to properly take care of your teeth, how to take care of your animal's teeth. So anything that's kind of health related. What would be the biggest thing you could tell someone our age to have good teeth later in the future? What would you tell the biggest thing for us? Brush maybe? your teeth. That's yeah. a, your technique on, on <coughs> brushing is really important. The type of brush you use. Uh, the type of toothpaste you use, having your teeth cleaned professionally at least a couple <laughs> times a year, uh, at taking care of your gums. Most people today don't lose their teeth because of, of decay of their teeth. They lose it because the gums become infected, the bone goes away, and their teeth fall out. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, if you ignore your teeth, they'll, 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 they'll go away. You. They will leave you. Do you have any recommendations on <laughs> what type of toothbrush? Um, and like what type of toothpaste, what's the best kind of? I, I'm not a big proponent, and this goes against my medical training, so I have to say, listen to your dentist, don't listen to me. Yeah. But I'm not a big fluoride person. I think fluoride is extremely toxic. Mm -hmm. And if you read a, tooth, a, to a tube of toothpaste that says, keep away from children, do not swallow. Well, when you take that toothpaste and you rub it on your gums, you're getting that, those chemicals that are in that toothpaste directly into your bloodstream and you're bypassing your gut, which has a safety mechanism for you. So, uh, you know, we have all these wonderful toothpastes that are being sold in commercials and so forth and recommended by five out of three dentists or whatever they say. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I tend to go to a more natural toothpaste. I actually make my own, but... Wow, but how do you do that? Well, I, it's really easy, I, and I'm not recommending this because <laughs> as a dentist, I can't. Yeah. I, you know, so don't do as I do, but since you asked that question, um, I take something called bentonite clay, and I put a little colloidal silver in there, and I put a little coconut oil, MCT oil, and uh, that is my toothpaste. So, uh, but wow. you can buy natural toothpaste that you don't have to mm -hmm. go through the trouble of making as well. And some of them have charcoal, some of them, it's the chemicals that aren't in the toothpaste that I like, because yep. a lot of the toothpaste has chemicals. Are you sensitive, is that okay? <laughs> As a dentist, I would tell you that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm not not as a dentist. Use that too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I, I don't use it. Okay. Okay. Um, and how about the technique in brushing your teeth? You know, you have to brush the way your teeth grow. So your upper teeth grow from the top down, and your lower teeth grow from the bottom up. So you you brush that way, so you don't go oh. against the grain, and you don't want to irritate your gums. So mm -hmm. you put that toothbrush on your gums and brush up. In, in up strokes or down strokes, depending on if you're brushing your upper teeth or down. Mm. On your biting surfaces, you go back and forth, and then on the inside surfaces, you go again the way the teeth grow. Or you can do little little circles. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I do, yeah. yeah, little circles. Yeah, that's my technique too, to do little circles. And then there are all kind of electric toothbrushes that yeah, help. Yeah, I, I use the so electric, electric toothbrush. toothbrushes, yeah. probably the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think if you if you use them properly, yeah, some of them actually have have ultrasound 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 that comes out sonic like sonic waves that that help do that. But the idea is, you know, you brush before you go to bed because most of the damage happens overnight. Brush when you first get up. Brush after you eat. Now okay. I have um, flossing too. A relative flossing. in my extended family that goes and gets this like a laser put on their teeth to whiten it. Do you think that would and do you think it will cause cancer? Because they were talking about that and um, stuff like that, how it disrupt your teeth, you know, cause cancer and hurt your teeth. Do you recommend that? Yeah, I don't, I don't see how a laser would, would, would cause cancer to whiten your teeth. Okay, because she was telling me that the, she had like a sign of form saying that she was okay with receiving, like if she got cancer, she'd not be, the doctor would not be at charge for it. And she got yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know. Uh, that's a hard one. I'm, I'm not that familiar with these the new laser techniques, but it's really light, not laser. Mm -hmm. Unless there's something new out that I'm not aware of, it, it's really just a light. So I don't I don't see how that. I haven't read any studies. Let's put it that way. Um, that says that. But <laughs> you think 
Do you continue going back to school to further your education with new advances in technology? Uh, you have to do that all the time to hold a license in, in each state oh. and in, in the state of Pennsylvania. In fact, I'm on my way to Las Vegas today for 16 hours of continuing education courses. That sounds like Jeez. fun. So, so you, ha you have to do that every year. Um, you renew your license every couple years, and, and so every year you have to accumulate so many CE credits. So we're always doing that. And it's important because things change yeah, pretty rapidly. Important. Technology in medicine is really advancing fairly quickly, just like it is with all of our computers and, and phones and so forth. So, How many times do you recommend flossing a day or in the week? Uh, every day you should floss. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably floss more than I brush. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I don't like anything in between my teeth. Yeah. And don't that's either. where a lot of damage happens when you don't floss. Okay. Yeah. And your flossing technique has to be correct as well because you don't want to damage your gums. You know, you're kind of putting a string in there and you're mm -hmm. sawing back and forth. So you you have to be taught the correct technique on how to floss. Yeah. yeah. You want the whitest smile. How would you, how do you think you achieve that? I well, foods foods stain your teeth. Yes. You know, so uh, you know, there's whitening techniques. Brushing actually is the best thing you could do. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the dentist's office and you have the hygienist polish your teeth, that helps, you know. Um, if, you're, if you're a big coffee drinker or a, a tea drinker, that's probably the two biggest staining types of things. So um, you just brush your teeth. That's the best thing you do. You don't have anything that's abrasive. So um, just, the, just the mechanical debridement will help keep your teeth white. Some people say that drinking water after you drink coffee or tea is a good thing to do because it kind of washes the, That's is that? Your, your natural saliva does that. Mm -hmm. um, and then water helps that because your teeth are actually kind of designed to clean themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, Same food way. is sticky and it gets stuck on there. And, and uh, if you're a mouth breather, you tend to build up more of this calculus and plaque and so forth. But yeah. water rinsing your mouth after you eat really does, does help. If you don't have a toothbrush, that's one of the best things you could do. Okay. And then, okay, uh, on to the thyroid. What exactly do you do with patients with thyroid cancer, you said? Well, not thyroid cancer. Uh, I, treat, I help uh, educate people on the proper blood work so that they can work with their physicians and getting proper diagnosis for thyroid issues because thyroid is one of the most misunderstood, undi mis un yeah. misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, undertreated problems that we have. And it's the basis of how every cell in our body functions and every organ functions. So a lot of people walk around with issues that you can relate right back to thyroid dysfunction. So what I do is I consult with people and explain to them so that they can op explain to them the process of how the thyroid works, what the proper testing is, because oddly enough, in most offices, the blood work isn't done properly, and uh, this way they can the patient can open up a dialogue with their with their physician and hopefully have the proper treatment. My mom had thyroid cancer a few years back, and she got the whole thing removed. Will that affect her um, later on in her life? It will affect it? her immediately after it's moved. Huh? Yeah, it removed. It's uh, your thyroid controls everything from your immune system to your digestion to how you think, how you sleep. Uh, so once that thyroid is removed, you, you know, medication is absolutely required to uh, supply that hormone. You know, you're, you're really, these hormones are messengers and they tell the cells and the organs what to do. So you need to have those messengers running around the body doing their job, so. Um, and then people, how exactly, like does, it affected, like Kaz's mom, he got his thyroid taken, she got her thyroid um, taken out. How does that affect exactly your body? Well. What exactly does it do? I hope your mom appreciates that you're <laughs> talking about her, Kaz. <laughs> but, I don't but, think she'll uh, be watching. <laughs> I'll change the channel real quick yeah, if she is. But, um, yeah, you, you didn't mention any names, so we're okay. But um, <laughs> your, your body is very, it's a chemical, response basically so you have all these chemicals that that send signals out to tell your DNA what to do to tell your organs what to do to tell your brain what to do so when you remove those chemical signals your body doesn't know how to function properly mm -hmm. so you could have digestive problems result 
you can have sleep problems result, you can have illnesses develop because your immune system goes down, you can develop foggy thinking, there's a, a whole list of things. Uh, you could you know, have hair problems, lose your hair, have brittle hair, brittle nails. All of these things start to happen because your body's not receiving the proper messages to function. So the thyroid, which is located right here, uh, is one of the most important organs. We don't think of it as an organ, but it's absolutely one of the most important organs in our body. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know where the thyroid was. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, most yeah. people don't actually, mm -hmm. until, you, until you develop a thyroid problem. Yep. How mm. common is it? Very okay. common, especially here in the Pittsburgh area. I think it's mostly because we don't have enough sun and this, this, uh, our thyroid requires vitamin D and we don't make enough vitamin D. So we're, the, the states around the Great Lakes, especially Pennsylvania and Michigan and so forth, uh, New York, are, are known as the goiter belts. You know, what a goiter is, is a swelling basically of your thyroid because your thyroid is trying to produce that hormone so it, it enlarges to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's very prominent in this area and what we call the rust belt states. And that's, I think, because of lack of sun. So. If I'm not getting enough vitamin D, how can I get enough vitamin D to not have thyroid problems? Supplement. You can purchase a supplement and take a certain amount of it. And, and I always recommend that you take vitamin D3, especially here, and you take it with uh, another vitamin called K2. And that's a carrier for the D3. Because we make D3, under our skin is a layer of cholesterol. It's, it's not activated. And when we go out in the sun, the sun activates that layer of cholesterol, which makes vitamin D3. But how many sunny days do we have in Pittsburgh? <laughs> Not many. Not many. Today's one. Uh -uh. Yeah, today's one, but we're, it's cold and we're inside. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, and then when we're outside, we cover up or we're, we're, we're putting on sunscreen. We're Yesterday we went through outside during class. Yeah, you're not. You it wasn't have, sunny though. You have to be out sun, outside for about 15 to 20 minutes, <clears throat> almost, almost without any clothes on in order to make enough vitamin D. So in, in about 20 minutes, in direct sunlight, you'll make about 10,000 international units of vitamin D in your body. And that's pretty much what you need in a day, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere between five and 10. So you, we really don't, don't get that. What do we, when we're out in the sun, what, do we, what gets exposed is basically just our face and our hands, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So on the side of everything that you do from, with medical industry, which is great stuff, do you do anything else? Do you enjoy having any hobbies or anything like that? Yeah, I love the mountain bike and I love the hike. Mountain bike. Yeah. Ooh. And when I lived in Arizona, I did that every single day just about. A little more difficult here. A little more yeah. difficult here to do. Yeah. You know, but uh, those are those are my favorites. I love antique and classic cars. So uh, I'm, I'm into that. And of course, I love these animals. And I'm always, I do a lot of work with, um, with uh, Angels for Animals, and we're doing some work with veterans with service dogs. And Aww. in fact, I have a van that, that uh, it's called ART, A-R-T, it's the Animal uh, Rescue Transport Van. If you see it running around the area, that's, uh, that van's being used to, to transport these dogs. And I actually have a radio show on AM 1250 The Answer every Saturday morning. It kind of mimics what every what we've been doing in Peters Township, I think now for about 14 years with this with this t this r TV show, this cable show. But we have the opportunity then to have guests that come on, that the callers can call in and ask questions too, because it's a live show every Saturday morning, and it's a takeoff off this show actually. Oh, cool. So so yeah, I keep myself busy. Yeah, you know that's good. So, oh. you know. Yeah, that's really cool. So how many um, animals do you think you rescue yearly? Like how many? I don't directly rescue any other than the ones that I've taken in, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, and Tucker is the only one I have right now, but um, I, Angels for Animals and Jesse Klepsik, uh, she, she, it's countless. She, she takes in probably five or six dogs uh, every couple of weeks. You know, she's, wow. she really, really has been rescuing dogs over 20 years. And she's put out thousands, found the homes for thousands of dogs. That's awesome. So I do a lot of work with her and very supportive of, of what she does. Mm -hmm. And she, she comes on this show often and, and um, she's on, she calls in the radio show almost every week to announce what dogs she has available and so forth. Oh. So in fact, we're having an event at the 84 Agway store on March 2nd, I think it is, which is a Saturday. 
from like noon to three, and Jesse's going to be there, and I'll be there, and, and um, we're going to have a she's going to have a table set up for some dogs that need some homes, and uh, we're going to talk about dog food and what what type of food you should feed your dog and so forth. So uh, that that's March second at from twelve to three at the eighty four Agway store. Okay. Um, what food? would you recommend to feed your dogs? Because my dog doesn't seem to like her food. She doesn't, she kind of, she'll only eat it whenever we're around. She's well, a picky eater. <laughs> she's a very picky I, eater. I, I think that's a fantastic question and it's one I, I like to talk about and mm -hmm. I think it's more important to talk about what you shouldn't feed your dog first of all. Okay. So your, your dog is a carnivore and what that means is your dog is a meat eater. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about teeth earlier and, and teeth are designed to chew. No, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back that up. <laughs> I said that wrong. Their, dogs' teeth are designed to tear. All their teeth are like peaks of a mountain. Yep. They have no chewing teeth, no grinding teeth. You and I have chewing and grinding teeth. So we're meant to chew and process a bunch of different, different variety types of foods from, from grains to beans to meat to whatever. Dogs are not designed to do that. Plus, their intestinal tract is a certain length to process meat. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that the commercial food industry does is they start putting in grains like corn because corn yeah. is a grain, it's not a vegetable. They, we kind of think it is a vegetable, yeah. but it's, it's a grain actually, it's a sugar. And then they put all these other fillers, wheat, oats and stuff like that. And those are things that your dog doesn't. cannot process, doesn't even have the digestive enzymes to process those, those types of foods. And a lot yeah. of dog food, that's the main ingredient. So I like, for example, Tucker is on a raw freeze-dried food and actually a raw fermented food. Uh, think about it, dogs in nature don't go out and mm -mm. make a fire and, <laughs> and cook some food up and, yeah. and kill all the enzymes or, or they, you know, they only eat certain parts of the animals. So they know what they're doing. We changed all that for them. So I think, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is feed your dog a, a quality meat sourced food minus of grains and minus of fillers and mm -hmm. chemicals and dyes. You know, they put all these different dyes in the food and the dyes are, are your dog doesn't care what color the food is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's there to sell you the food. Yep. So as, as close as you can get to nature for your animal, I think that's the, the best thing you could do. Okay. That's really interesting. I got to go home and tell my parents that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know the ingredients. You know, if you feed a kibble, kibble, kibble to be made is mostly grain. And grain is a sugar, and your dogs can't process sugar, first of all. And then you get, you get grain-free. And grain-free, in order to make a kibble grain-free, you have to put in actual sugar. So this is a, a good formula that everybody should be aware of. If you take the the panel that says, not the ingredient list where they list the meat and the corn or whatever else is in there, but if you take the analysis panel and you take the first four ingredients, which is protein, it'll be protein, fat, moisture, and fiber, or they call fiber ash sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you add up those four ingredient percentages and you subtract from 100, you'll find out the amount of sugar that's in that food. So a, a dog shouldn't really have much sugar. They can have some natural sugar from, from vegetables or fruit, mm -hmm. but in order for them to make kibble, they actually have to put in a lot of unnatural sugar, I mean, uh, uh, white sugar, you know, that's not good for them. Yeah. So you'll know by, by taking that percentage of the first four ingredients, subtracting it from 100, and you'll see some of these foods are 50, 60% sugar, Jeez. which is not good for your dog, yep. you know? So that's a, that's a good way to judge what you're feeding your dog. That's really interesting. Um, I actually have two more questions about that. Um, so I feed my dogs apples because um, I heard it's good for their teeth. Is that true? And bananas, but well, like you just see, said. See, bana I don't, bananas and, and apples, Tucker loves apples. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. My dog does yeah, too. But, but the, the chewing factor they don't chew, but when they bite into a hard apple, that can clean their teeth a little bit. Mm. Bananas are one of the highest sugar fruits out there. Yeah, <laughs> probably so, not good for them. No, and a little bit of banana <laughs> wouldn't hurt, I'm sure. I always eat Granny Smith apples, and that's what uh, he eats, and they're low in sugar, mm. and I don't give them a lot. Yeah, you know? right. 
Just I don't enough. see that as a problem myself, but I wouldn't use it for the main purpose of, of cleaning their teeth. Yep. You know how we were talking about brushing your teeth? You can mm -hmm. do the same thing with your dog. I wouldn't use toothpaste. You can get a baby soft bristle brush, put some water on there, and just make those circle motions around How often teeth. do you brush Tucker's teeth? You know what? Tucker is a super dog, but he's never ever liked me to ever get near his mouth. And he would twist and turn. Never try to bite, but twist and turn and so forth. Oh. And, and I gave up on trying to do that. So I, I he, you know, I really never got along well brushing his teeth. How often do you think we should brush our dog's teeth? Every day. Really? So like when you're Every brushing day. yours, you stick yeah. them once, They need it once a day. You give them some kind of chewing modality, you know, like we talked about, and, and that'll help. You know. mm. Interesting. Um, and then my other question was grapes. I heard that that can toxic. kill dogs. Yep. Absolutely toxic. There, it, it actually can cause instant kidney failure. With and them. raisins. Raisins, yeah. xylitol raisins. that's in like chewing gum and so forth. All those things are very toxic to your animal. How come? There's pr I don't know and uh, nobody knows actually, yeah. but there's probably some kind of enzyme in there that, that just puts them into kidney failure. Jeez. So you really have to be careful. Yep. That particularly. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on Healthy Pets and Healthy Owners. This Thanks was really us. spontaneous, thank and, you so much. And, and it was it was great doing this. It gives yeah. me a little ch chance to talk a little bit, and and uh, I appreciate both Kaz and McKenna coming on. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time on Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet, and when you're healthy, you're happy too. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>